On 16th March 2022, Russian forces attacked the Donetsk Regional Academic Drama Theater in Mariupol, Ukraine. At that time, hundreds of civilians were taking shelter in the theater. At least a dozen were killed, probably many more. Others were seriously injured. An investigation by Amnesty International has determined that the attack was an airstrike carried out by Russian forces, most likely using two 500-kilogram bombs. Amnesty's work shows that the attack was a war crime and that Russia most likely intentionally targeted the theater knowing that a large number of civilians were sheltering inside. We interviewed more than 50 survivors and witnesses, 28 of whom were in the theater during the attack. We then combined these interviews with architectural plans, mathematical modeling of the explosion, satellite imagery, and other visual evidence to reconstruct the attack and show where people died and others survived. After Russian forces attacked Mariupol, the theater became a haven for civilians fleeing violence in other parts of the city. Civilian volunteers organized medical care, distributed water and cooked in a filled kitchen. This civilian pattern of life was visible to Russian forces that had access to real-time intelligence, including satellite imagery. Using similar sources, Amnesty International found no significant military presence inside or close to the theater in the days before the attack. Witnesses told Amnesty International that at most one to two Ukrainian soldiers visited the theater for short periods. They delivered food, dropped off civilians fleeing violence, or shared information about possible evacuation. News of these evacuations caused the theater's population to fluctuate. On 4 March, information spread rapidly via text message and word of mouth that the following morning there would be an official humanitarian corridor. The theater was one of three meeting points. More than a thousand people gathered outside. But the evacuation attempt failed, and the population of the theater swelled to over 1,000. About a week later, volunteers wrote the word children in Russian, on the ground outside, large enough for aircraft to see. On 14th March, as the fighting moved closer, a convoy of civilian cars managed to unofficially evacuate from the city. Again, news spread quickly. The following day, hundreds of people living in the theater fled Mariupol in another convoy. Several hundred more stayed behind. With fewer people in the theater, there was now enough space for those remaining to move into the areas believed to be safest, especially the basement and rooms protected by thick walls. The morning of 16th March was clear, and the theater is visible in satellite imagery. Most of the parked cars are gone, but hundreds of civilians remain inside. Just minutes after this image was taken, between 10.02 and 10.20, a large explosion destroyed the theater. Amnesty worked with a physicist to mathematically model the explosion. Up to 800 kilograms of TNT exploded inside the performance space. It takes two FAB-500 bombs detonating at the same time to create the blast this large. The strike was almost certainly carried out by a Russian fighter aircraft. Russian state media has shown jets employing these FAB-500 bombs across eastern Ukraine. The ordnance smashed through the roof on the eastern side of the theater and detonated at the stage level. To better understand the extent of the casualties caused by the attack, we spoke with 28 survivors. In some areas, the damage was severe. The filled kitchen outside, where volunteers were preparing food, was completely destroyed. Here, Amnesty International has confirmed multiple fatalities. Yevhen Hrebensky was inside the theater at the time of the blast with his mother Natalia. He told us how he found his father's body in the field kitchen. I went back to look for my dad. There were many injured people. At first I saw his arm. I saw a familiar hand. You know the hand of your loved ones. 
I didn't want my mom to see. In other areas, the damage was much less severe. These areas are where the vast majority of people were at the time of the attack. Here, Amnesty found no evidence of fatalities, including the basement below the entrance to the theater, where two to three hundred people were reportedly sheltering. Even survivors witnessed devastating scenes. One survivor described being in the basement with her boyfriend and mother at the time of the attack. In a second, everything changed. Everything jumped up. People started screaming. It was full of dust. I saw people bleeding. We grabbed our documents and left. Some people were not as lucky. 